A $6 million lawsuit against rock climbing's biggest auto belay manufacturer could spell the end for all auto belays in rock climbing gyms. In other news, a man in Portland, Oregon planned a mass shooting at a rock climbing festival last week, but was thankfully thwarted by police just in time. And trouble in Canada, as Canada's hardest boulder problem of V16 has been downgraded, not once, but twice. I'm Anchor47, and you're watching Rock Climbing Morning News. So we have a lot to talk about this week. A lot is going on in rock climbing right now. A lot of uh, kind of shitty stuff has been happening in the past couple months. Uh, we're gonna start with the lawsuit. For those of you that haven't heard, back in 2019, some dude uh, was climbing on an auto belay ball in Seattle, fell from the top, uh, just free fell 30 feet, hit the ground, and uh, he got injured. <laughs> he got fucked up, right? He, uh, to, to put it in perspective, he had 12 pelvic fractures, amongst other things. When people say, uh, you know, somebody broke every bone in their body, this is what they're talking about. This is the literal example of that. And thankfully, the guy did survive, but he did file a lawsuit, $5 million against the auto blade manufacturer and $1 million against the gym. And this is one of the few circumstances where I feel like $6 million is a fair price point. Sometimes people will sue, like they're spilling coffee on themselves and spill for $200 million. And you're like, what the f but this is one of the few ones where uh, six million dollars seems fair because these, these are life-changing injuries, right? Like six million dollars probably is the amount that you need to cover medical bills for the rest of your life. So that part of it, I think, is at least somewhat fair. It seems like a fair amount for the lawsuit, but uh, that's not all there is to the story. So we're gonna break this suit down piece by piece, starting with the fall. Now, as far as evidence of the fall goes, there's not actually any video proof or anything like that. So all we have are eyewitness accounts. And as far as eyewitness accounts go, every single eyewitness who was on the scene that saw the fall, every single one of them say the same thing, that the climber was not attached to the auto belay device when they hit the ground. Meaning that the auto belay device either broke, snapped, the carabiner broke, their harness ripped, something happened to detach them from the device because it was still up at the top. But on top of this, a few of these same eyewitnesses also claim to have looked up at the top of the wall to see that his carabiner was still attached to the belay device, meaning that the belay device itself did not malfunction as his carabiner was still clipped into it and it was still holding tension. He just wasn't clipped into his harness at all. Now, some of you are probably wondering how that could possibly happen, right? Did the harness just rip or something like that? No, there's actually something that can happen, which I call half clipping. I don't know if that's the actual term, but it's basically where your carabiner gate doesn't close all the way and it's kind of pressed against the harness. And I've had this happen to me many times. I've not left it like that, but it, you know, you have to kind of wiggle it around and cram your harness to get it closed all the way. And what this can lead to when this happens is your carabiner will hold enough tension to where the auto belay device will be pulling you up as you climb. But when some big motion happens, like, I don't know, jumping off the wall, it can jostle it enough to come loose meaning that you're no longer attached at all to the auto belay and you're gonna fall most likely to your death. And while this sounds like it'd be a pretty rare occurrence, there's actually two other instances of this happening in 2021. One in June, a woman in Colorado fell 40 feet while not being clipped into the auto belay all the way and fell to her death. And another man in Australia in October had the exact same thing happen where he also fell to his death. Both investigations showed that they were not clipped into the auto blades uh, correctly. And obviously with the lawsuit of this magnitude, an investigation was done. Two impartial parties hired by the prosecution uh, investigated this auto blade device, meticulously, thoroughly investigated it, and both parties found that the auto blade device was functioning perfectly fine and had uh, no issues whatsoever. So the information we have so far is all eyewitness accounts say the climber was not clipped in. Um, multiple instances have proven that not clipping in can lead to a fall like this and a thorough investigation has proven that the auto blade device was perfectly fine. It was functioning perfectly uh, correctly. <laughs> so now that we have that information out of the way, it's time to move on to the lawsuit itself. The lawsuit is as follows. You have $5 million against the auto blade company for a manufacturing auto blade device and $1 million against the gym for not making sure that the climber was clipped in properly. Do you see a problem <laughs> with the logic here? Uh, if they were clipped into the device properly, then the auto blade would be at fault. But if the auto blade is at fault, them being clipped in properly wouldn't be the cause. So these, these lawsuits contradict each other, right? They can't both be true at the same time. I also hate the precedent this sets that uh, gym staff have to breathe down your neck all the time. Like if we're gonna sue gyms for anything that goes wrong, 
uh, it's gonna be miserable to climb in climbing gyms because the only way they're gonna be legally not liable for you to get hurt is if they follow you around everywhere. Imagine if every time you wanted to climb in a gym, top rope, lead climbing, you had to have a gym staff member there watching you like meticulously. That's like going to a shooting range and walking out onto the range while people are shooting and getting shot and then suing the range for somebody not stopping you. You're like, oh, I didn't know that I wasn't allowed to walk out on the range. Somebody should have stopped me. It's like, no, we told you in orientation, do not walk out on the range. And, oh, I, I wasn't listening to the orientation. <laughs> it's the exact same thing. Like they taught you in orientation how to clip in properly. You signed a waiver saying, I understand, I know how to clip in properly, I can climb. And then you didn't clip in properly and you're suing the gym for it. And that being said, one really easy way to avoid falling in the first place is training. And the best way to train is with your own personal hangboard. <laughs> Probably not the best way to transition into this video sponsor, which is frictitious. And if you want your fingers to be strong enough to clip in all the way when you're going on that auto belay wall, you need a home training board, which you can get from frictitious. I'm sure most of you have seen those pull-up bars you can mount in your doorway so you can work out at home. Well, Frictitious had the genius idea, I don't know how nobody thought of this up until now, of making the same thing, but for a hangboard. I got a Frictitious hangboard and doorway mount a few months ago, and I gotta say, uh, having a hangboard at your house is the shit. It's definitely, it's desirable, to say the least. I think it's pretty standard to say that hangboard exercises are one of the most efficient exercises for rock climbing and building finger strength. So having a hangboard at home that you can easily take down and put back up, move around, put it wherever you want without damaging your house or the hangboard or needing any extra equipment whatsoever. And it's just an awesome thing to have. And Frictitious is offering a deal right now that if you buy a hangboard and doorway mount together, you get 20% off your entire order, which is a huge discount. 20% uh, off is massive. So you don't need a code or anything like that. As long as you buy a door amount and a hangboard at the same time, you get 20% off. It's a pretty cool deal. Check it out. Click the link in the description. But now it's time to get back into the news. Now, obviously, you're probably all thinking the same thing. This is kind of a bullshit lawsuit, which I think is what pretty much everybody thought. I don't think they really stood that much of a chance of winning this. Um, once again, this happened in 2019 and it was just settled now. But there was one crucial error made by the Autoblade company, Perfect Descent, where they, I guess, covered up a recall they had in 2020. There was some massive recall of Autoblade devices for not functioning properly. They weren't like lethal. They were just lowering people too quickly. They had like rapid descents. And uh, I guess they didn't divulge that information during the case, which was a huge deal. And the guy who fell's lawyer immediately jumped on this saying that Perfect Descent was also responsible for the other two deaths that had happened in 2021. And it was likely the exact same event that had happened, which is like one of the main things I hate about all the legal bullshit and like lawyers were like, those, those were fully investigated. They were fully proven that the person was not clipped in, but the lawyer is perfectly willing to go back and be like, see, it's exactly what happened to those two, the Autoblade device didn't catch them properly and they fell to their deaths. It's like, no, there's an investigation. Like, it had nothing to do with that, but still perfectly willing to say that in official statements and uh, make perfect dissent look even worse, even though there's no evidence. Once again, not a single piece of evidence that any of this has happened. For those of you that don't know, perfect dissent is the Autoblay uh, supplier for all of IFSC, right? They have never had any issues. All professional speed climbers use perfect dissent Autoblays when they're speed climbing. Not to say that they can't make mistakes or maybe the autoblade device did fail. It's perfectly reasonable to assume that did. But if you have no evidence sitting and blaming them for every climber who's ever gotten hurt, you know how many climbers get hurt all the time? Not on autoblades. All the time. Climbers get hurt bouldering. They die free soloing pretty regularly. So to say that every time one of them gets hurt autoblading, it's because the autoblade device malfunctioned. It's, it's just kind of ridiculous. I don't know the exact details of how lawsuits work. I'm not legal legal. <laughs> I'm a lot dumber and have a worse haircut. But uh, what I can say is apparently this was such a major blow to perfect descent when the judge found out, the judge was pissed that they covered this up, that they just settled. They were like, all right, whatever, we're done filing this lawsuit. They settled and uh, paid $5 million to the person. The person who could not prove that, that had zero evidence that either the gym or the auto blame manufacturer had done anything wrong. They settled for $5 million, which then led the lawyers for the gym to also just settle and pay the $1 million. Anyway, the repercussions of this lawsuit are pretty severe. A lot of gyms have completely just gotten rid of auto blades. Like people do not trust them now because they know that even if the auto blade device is working perfectly fine and they do all their checks, if somebody just doesn't clip in properly or does something stupid, they can easily win a $6 million lawsuit with no evidence. I even read multiple accounts on Reddit, which is 
you know, the internet's most factual <laughs> source of information. But there were a bunch of people on Reddit that said that their gyms had taken out their auto blaze specifically because of this lawsuit. Like multiple gyms have, according to people on Reddit, taken out their auto blade devices completely and they're just not using them anymore, which sucks because auto blades are pretty cool. And the other part of this that really sucks is I do sympathize with the guy. I mean, that's a life changing event, falling 30 feet while doing a hobby you really enjoy and just destroying your body. Like obviously it sucks, his life has changed forever, but you lose some of my sympathy when you lash out and start filing frivolous lawsuits. Like sometimes you can be the victim of something terrible and not have it be anyone's fault. Sometimes it's it's not always somebody's fault. If you get caught in a flash flood while hiking through the woods and drown, it's not somebody's fault. If anything, the only person to blame is you. It's not like you should be berated for it, but the only person who's at fault for him falling was him. He didn't clip in properly. Like there's nothing anybody else could have done. So our next story is a pretty dark one. It's a pretty shitty situation. Uh, there was a guy in Portland, Oregon, who decided uh, he wanted to kill a bunch of people and he wanted to do it at a huge climbing festival, a three day long festival called the Smith Rock Kragen Classic. Now, as with all mass shootings, this is pretty horrifying to hear about that somebody was planning on doing this, but thankfully this was one of the few instances where he was thwarted and caught before he could commit the crime because he was bragging about it to his friends like a fucking idiot, he bragged about doing it to his friends and thankfully his friends weren't also fucking psychopaths and told the police. So the police waited until he pretty much had all the stuff together so that they had all the evidence. And while he was driving to the event, they knew he was going there and they just intercepted him and arrested him. I also do like that it was a three hour drive. He lived three hours away from the festival. So he drove the entire three hours before they arrested him, which I feel like was like an extra fuck you. <laughs> like they couldn't have just arrested him before the three hour drive. They're like, nah, let him drive. Let him do the whole three hour commute. Nobody wants to drive three hours, it fucking sucks. So <laughs> I, I, I did think that was kind of funny. Obviously it, they, they wanted to wait until he was at the festival so that they had once again more evidence that he was planning on doing the shooting but i just thought it was funny that they made him drive three hours and then probably hauled him all the way back too so the, the, this whole story starting to have a happy ending already and this also fucked up but i couldn't help but laugh at uh they searched his car and in the report they said that they found two handguns an ar-15 style rifle and climbing gear <laughs> meaning that he was like driving out there to commit this shooting but he was also gonna do some rock climb. He's like, I'm not gonna not rock climb at the Smith Rock Kragen Classic. I'm not gonna drive all the way out there and not do some climbing. But initially they assumed he wasn't going to do a mass shooting. It was like a planned attack. Like there were some people he knew there that he wanted to kill or something like that. Um, but they found his journal in his car because that they always keep journals. I don't know why all the mass killers or sociopaths and stuff always keep a journal, which is nice for evidence, but kind of odd. And basically his journal just proved that he was just gonna do a mass shooting. It was just like, I'm gonna shoot up this place and nobody can stop me. And uh, he did not shoot up the place and he was stopped. <laughs> so so he, he was far off from uh, what his expectations were. The results did not go as planned. And in his journal, he specifically stated that he was just angry, fucking piece of shit, just wanted to go and kill as many people as possible. Fucking loony, I don't know. I don't, I'm not gonna act like a psychologist. I don't understand why people do this kind of shit, but Thankfully, he was caught and thankfully there was more than enough evidence to put him away so we don't have to worry about him doing something like this again. And I was actually pretty shocked to see that a similar incident kind of happened in California in like the same week that uh, there was another person that was making threats of doing a mass shooting at a gym and they said, it's not funny, but they said that they were tired of all the wannabes and them being too lenient on them in the gym. Listen, as a wannabe, I take offense to this. This is like the most rock climbing thing ever. Everyone always talks about how rock climbing is like the most gatekeeping sport that exists. What I did not realize was that gatekeeping and rock climbing has gotten so bad that people are being threatened to be shot and killed for not being good enough at the sport. Granted, I don't know if this guy was actually a crusher or not. He could have just as likely been a shitty climber. Uh, pretty crazy, pretty fucked up story. Uh, thankfully, neither of these turned into anything. So there's a silver lining. Uh, you know, I joke because there's a part of me that when I hear these stories just gets severely depressed and overwhelmed with dread knowing that people would do stuff like this over something like fucking rock climbing. So let's cover a positive story, right? Bring the mood back up. I need to anti-depress myself. Uh, a 77 year old rock climber in the news right now uh, saying, it doesn't matter how old you are, you can always get into a new hobby, follow your dreams. 
Wow, pretty wholesome story. He just started rock climbing at 77 years old. I didn't actually watch the, the whole video because I mean, I get it. He's 77 and he got into rock climbing. Wholesome story, pretty cool. We also have another interesting story. Canada has uh, their hardest boulder, which is a V16 called the Meg. And now that it's been sent a few times after the first descent, it's been downgraded twice. Also, does this guy not look like Moist Critical <laughs> in the article? I don't know why, that just, that, that kind of blew me away. This guy looks, if you told me that this is a picture of Charlie rock climbing, I'd be like, wow, Charlie's a crusher. Anyway, back to the story. Uh, three people have sent it now after the first descent, and all of them say it's no harder than V14. I know downgrades happen a lot in rock climbing, but to have your hardest boulder in your entire country get downgraded twice, kind of a kick in the nards, Canada. But that's not the only major downgrade that's happened, as Stefano Gasolfi's 515B in Italy called Lapsus has just been downgraded to a 515A. But this one has a little more controversy to it because when Stefano sent it, he didn't wear knee pads. And as he states, knee pads were not very common in climbing when he did the first ascent of this route. And the guy who downgraded it to a 515A wore knee pads. So it's kind of a weird scenario because knee pads are becoming more common. So it's not like a full like, oh yeah, if you use aid, obviously it's gonna be easier because people aren't really seeing knee pads as aid anymore. Because if you really think about it, like what is aid? Like are climbing shoes aid? Wouldn't sending something without climbing shoes on be the natural way to do it? Like we don't look at climbing shoes as aid, so why would knee pads be aid? Why would uh, gloves be aid, right? Crack gloves, like it's kind of hard to say what is and isn't, it's really just up to the time you live in. So I do get that without knee pads, it probably is a 515B and with knee pads, it's probably a 515A. I, it's probably as simple as that, but Stefano did concede and say, yeah, sure, we'll call it a 515A, although, I would imagine that's kind of annoying. <laughs> but to put it in perspective, the hardest climb in the world, Silence, was sent with an e-pad on. So anyway, those are all of our stories this evening. Thank you so much for watching. Rock climbing, evening news, morning news. <laughs> I already forget what it's called. Try out Fictitious Hangboard. Buy a doorway mount and a hangboard. Get 20% off. And I'll see you guys in a month with more news, I guess. I don't know. It's been rock climbing morning news. What do you want me to say? Oh yeah, we also fired Weatherman Tom. He was terrible at his job. We're getting a new weatherman. See you guys next month.